Greetings one and all, Pastor Ryan here. Thank you for joining us for another Kids Digital Service. We are sure to have a blast together and also experience God right there where you're at and watching. I am so happy and so glad you could join us. And in fact, today, if this is your very first time, you've never seen one of these Kids Digital Services before, but this is the first time you're watching one, well, let us know, all right? We would love to hear from you and say hello. And so you can do that by having a parent or guardian help you with this. Uh, but text VIPs, that's right, VIPs to 94000, okay? Or you can also comment right there where you're watching this video. You can leave a comment or a message saying VIPs. We would love to hear from you. Welcome you to our church family and also say hello and get to know you as well. But today we are right in the middle of our Family Matters series and throughout this whole series, we are learning that we don't get to choose our families, but we do get to choose how we treat each other in our families. So throughout this whole series, we'll find out what matters to help you and I become better family members and also become more like a child of God too. And I got an idea to help us get to know each other right there where you're at, get to know the families you're watching with, the friends or the group that you're watching with. Well, let's do a little icebreaker, okay? So in a few seconds, I want you guys to go around and share each other or share with each other a memory that you have about a father or a father-like figure from your life. We're approaching Father's Day, and uh, so I wanna celebrate the fathers or the people in our life that kind of act like a father in our life at times as well. So in the next 10 seconds, go around to the people with you and share with each other, share a memory about a father or a father-like figure that you have had in your life. All right, on your marks, get set, go, go. 10 seconds, go ahead, go, go now. Share each other, share with each other a memory of a father or father-like figure that you have. All right, and stop. Very good. Well, nicely done, thank you guys. Well, now that we've got to know our families and our friends a bit better and the fathers in their life too, Let's get to know our Father God a bit more as we sing about Him. And let's sing about the blessing that we have as children of God. So stand up with me and get your arms and your hands and your feet ready and your words. And let's praise God together in a song of His blessing as children of God. Let's sing.
thanks so much for singing and participating. I could hear you singing from here. It was awesome. Go ahead and find a seat, take a load off, catch your breath. And uh, what a great song that was. And even more, a great reminder about the blessing of God on our life as children of God. Well, now that we've uh, got our blood flowing, go ahead and get your thinking caps on and get ready to split into two teams because the Family Matters games are beginning. All right, let's play. Welcome one and all to Family Matters. We are on to our first game, Sibling Feud. So get ready, here's how to play. You're gonna split your group or your family into two teams. They don't need to be even, so go ahead and take the time now. Split into two teams. Go ahead, a few more seconds. You can divide boys versus girls, whatever, by age group. Anything that works. All right, five more seconds, split into two teams. Once again, they do not have to be even. Just split into two teams. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're situated into our teams. Now, here's how to play. Each team will compete to be the first to answer a question about siblings in the Bible. That's right, you'll get a question about a sibling or siblings in the Bible, and you must be the first to shout it out. Now, for each question you get right, that is a point. And be sure to remember your points, because they will come in handy later. You got it? Feel good about it? All right, first one to shout out the answer to this and get it right will earn the point. Here's the question. What was the name of the woman Abraham's servant found to be Isaac's wife? Five more seconds. Three, two, one. All right, did you shout it out? Someone get it? What was the name of the woman Abraham's servant found to be Isaac's wife? If you shouted and you were first to shout, Rebecca, that is right. So if your team shouted out Rebecca first, give your team a point. Now we have one more, the final question of today's Sibling Feud game. Here you go, another chance for a point. The question is this, what was the name of Rebecca's brother who ran out to meet Abraham's servant? What was his name? Shout it out if you know it. First team to shout out gets a point. That is all, that was your chance. All right, here it is. What was the name of Rebecca's brother who ran out to meet Abraham's servant? Laban, that's right. If your team shouted out Laban first, give yourself a point. Thanks again for playing our first game in Family Matters, Sibling Feud. But the fun doesn't stop here. We got more games coming, so stay tuned for more. Awesome. Well, great fun and a great way to start our Family Matters games. Uh, but today, as we go through our service, if you haven't noticed yet, it's all about this one big idea. And that is God's blessing matters. That's right. God's blessing matters. And we get to be, have this blessing on our life because of what Jesus did and will we love and live for him. And we also know this because of what our memory verse teaches us. This is straight from the Bible in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 14. And it says this, He redeemed us, all right, that's Jesus. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham way back when might come to all. <laughs> well, what, what a, a deep and impactful verse. I mean, it's saying that the blessing that, that we've actually been learning about and hearing about this whole series so far, that blessing on Abraham and his sons is now available to all of us because of Jesus. <laughs> wow, <laughs> blows my mind. I mean, there's a lot to think about, but, but we'll hear more about this. We'll hear more about God's blessing and, and why it's important in just a little bit. But, but I can tell. All right, I can tell you need a mental break, don't you? Yeah, I do too. That was a lot, that was powerful, that was big, and I'm just still taking it in, but I, I think we need a, a quick mental break. So how about this? Let's break and let's play another game, Family Matters Round Two. All right, here we go, let's go. Welcome back, we are on to game two of Family Matters here. This game is called Family Feud. So here's how to play. So go ahead and get back into those two teams that you had earlier. And while you're up and about, go ahead and get something to write your team's answers down or record them on. A piece of paper, a phone, anything like that will do. So go ahead, take a few seconds, get into your teams. And while you're up and out and about or going and getting stuff and standing up, go ahead and get a piece of paper and a phone to use to or something to record your answers on. A few more seconds. Stand up and get into your teams. Find something to record your answers on. About five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, 
one. All right, all right. Well, come on back and join us. Everyone into their two teams. Got something to record and write your answers down on. All right, here's how we're going to play. You'll have 30 seconds to write down or record multiple answers from a question in the Bible or from this week's topic. And for each answer that your team gets right, that is a point. So be sure to remember your points through this whole service or this game time. Those points will come in handy at the end. And also, there will be one question with multiple answers. I would recommend that your team does write your answers down quietly and discreetly. You don't want to give the other team a freebie. All right, everyone ready? Here comes the question. What? For we receive God's blessing by believing in God, but falling into temptation can cause us to trade in God's blessing. So what are three sources of temptation? That's the question. What are the three main sources of temptation? 15 seconds just passed. Write them down. What are the three main sources of temptation? Coming up on five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and stop recording. Stop writing down your answers. Go ahead. What you have is what you got. All right, we're going to show the answers. So what are the three main sources of temptation? One is Satan or the devil. If you had that written down or recorded, give your team a point. You nailed it. All right, let's go into the second source. The world. The world can be a source of temptation. So if you wrote down something along those lines, the world, uh, then you also got a point for your team. The third one, our self or our own desires. Yes, and those are the three sources of temptation. Uh, did you get them all right? Did you get three points in that one? How's your team doing? All right, be sure you're keeping track of all three or all of your team's points. Hopefully more than three by now. But those points will come in handy later. Thanks for playing game two of Family Matters here. And now we'll be back soon. The fun is not over yet. We'll come back for a final game in a little bit. All right, welcome back. Wow, the competition is getting thick there. I could cut it with a knife. I can sense that the, the competition is about to bubble over. Well, hey, let's take a quick break. We're going we're gonna to see who the winners are in a little bit. But first, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, uh, oh, bless me. Oh, did, you, did you say bless you too? Yeah, that's just one silly little example of actually how all of us, a lot of us, have learned to give out blessings. For example, when someone sneezes, we say bless you. All right, then that's just one example. Another example is when we wish someone a good day or a good morning. You see, blessings bring life and not curses. Curses bring trouble and hurts. And, and we may not officially receive a blessing or inheritance from our parents like they did in the Old Testament with Abraham's kids and, and so on, but, but we all do want a blessing. We all want to say, have someone say, bless you when we sneeze. We all want to have someone say, good morning or good day, you know, instead of a curse. And you'll see actually how this blessing matters more to one brother than the other in today's Bible story about Jacob and Esau. So let's learn from them a little bit more about how God's blessing matters with their story. Take a look. God's story, Jacob and Esau. So part of God's story is about twin brothers, and it begins like this. Once, there were twins named Jacob and Esau, and they didn't get along. They actually started fighting before they were born. Then during birth, Esau came out first, but Jacob was holding on to his heel. That's not normal. And they even looked different. The Bible says Esau's body was covered in so much red hair, it was almost like he had clothes on. Jacob's skin was smooth. Well, they got even more different as they grew up. Esau hunted animals and spent time outside. Their dad, Isaac, was a big meat eater, so Esau was his favorite. Jacob, on the other hand, was a quiet guy who liked to stay indoors. Their mom, Rebecca, liked Jacob the best. The Bible doesn't talk much about Jacob and Esau as kids. But we do know Esau was lucky to be the oldest because he had what's called a birthright. That meant Esau would be in charge of their family, including all their money, land, and stuff. Jacob would probably have to work for his brother Esau, and their dad Isaac would give Esau a blessing, which means Isaac would ask God to take care of his oldest son Esau in an extra special way. Well, you probably think Esau was pretty excited about this, but he wasn't. In fact, one day he gave it up. 
he just returned from a hunting trip. Since he was out killing animals all day, he didn't have time to eat. He came home starving. Jacob was making stew, so Esau said, Quick, give me some of that stew. I'm very hungry. Now, Jacob was a little sneaky. So he didn't just share the stew with his hungry brother, which would have been nice. Instead, he said, first, sell me your birthright. And guess what? Esau said yes. It's a little like paying a million dollars for a bowl of mushy soup. We don't know why Esau did that, but the Bible says he didn't care about the birthright. But later, when Isaac was really old and about to die, he wanted to ask God to take special care of his firstborn Esau. So he told Esau to go hunting and make him some tasty food, maybe for the last time. Now, Esau wanted the birthright, so he left right away to hunt. Meanwhile, Rebekah had heard Isaac and Esau talking, and remember, Jacob was her favorite. She wanted him to get the blessing, so she did something really sneaky. She told Jacob, I will prepare tasty food for your father. You take it to your father to eat, then he'll give you his blessing before he dies. See, Isaac was blind. She was telling Jacob to pretend he was Esau. But there was a slight problem with her plan. First off, Esau was hairy. So if Isaac touched Jacob's smooth skin, he would know the truth. The Bible says Esau had a certain smell too, which might be a polite way of saying he stunk. I mean, imagine how smelly a guy would be if he was always sweating and getting dead animal blood stuck on his clothes and matted in his hairy skin. And this was before deodorant. So even though Isaac was blind, he might smell Jacob or touch his smooth arm and know the truth. Well, Rebecca was sneaky, like Jacob. She told Jacob to put sheepskin on his arms and wear some of Esau's smelly clothes. Now Isaac would never know. And even though Isaac wondered why the voice sounded like Jacob, guess what? The trick worked. Jacob got the blessing. Now Esau would have to work for him. As you might imagine, Esau was furious. In fact, Rebekah had to help Jacob run away so Esau wouldn't kill him. What's really crazy about this story is Jacob messed up big time, but he really did get God's blessing. Esau even forgave him later. We don't know why God let this happen, but the truth is we all mess up sometimes, and God still wants us to be part of his story. And that's the story of Jacob and Esau. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jacob and Esau were twins. They were different. Jacob tricked Esau. Esau sold his birthright for stew. Later, Esau wanted his blessing. Rebekah helped Jacob trick his dad, Isaac. Jacob got Esau's blessing. Esau was furious. Jacob ran away, but God still blessed him. And that's a part of God's story. Wow, well, what, a, what an interesting, what a strange story. I mean, there's a lot going on here, a lot of things that may be confusing to us and why he's doing that. But what this story does show us is that Jacob knew our big idea today. Jacob knew that a blessing mattered. That's right. Jacob knew, and that Bible story we just listened to showed us that God's blessing matters. Now, hopefully you and I, we won't have to trick our parents or trick God into receiving a blessing from them. So, so why does God's blessing matter for you and I today? Okay, that's a great question. And how does this story impact and, and what does it mean for you today? Okay, so let's, let's look at it. There's some great things that this story clues us in as to why God's blessing matters for you and I today. And here's one reason, okay? One is because God's blessing brings life. From our Bible story, we know that Esau was the oldest son, all right? And it was his right by birth, hence birthright, all right, to be the recipient of his father's blessing. Knowing that, it makes sense now why Jacob was willing to trick and trade Esau for his dad's blessing. See, Jacob understood the power of these blessings. He understood that these promises from God were good and th th that these promises would bring a blessing of life and prosperity to him and his future. Well, for you and I today, we too can be in that line of blessing and birthright from Abraham. Just listen to our memory verse one more time from Galatians 3.14. It, 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 it says this, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to all. This means that you don't have to be like Jacob. You don't have to barter or try to exchange your way to a blessing from God. When you accept Jesus' forgiveness and say out loud you believe in Him, and then you go on to love and live him, for Him, then you receive new life. God's blessing brings life, and God's blessing to Abraham can be yours too. 
And then the second reason that God's blessing matters is because God's blessing is priceless. As we've already heard in today's Bible story and learned, Esau had been blessed with the birthright. A birthright meant that he would receive the inheritance of whatever was passed down to him from his family. But Esau lost that sight of his future promise and he focused more on how he felt in a moment. And because of that, he gave it all up for a one bowl of soup. <laughs> I mean, talk about a big and a tough spoonful to swallow. Am I right? I know that was a corny joke, but hey, but Esau does serve as an example for you and I today to not give up on God's blessing or that birthright for a temporary desire. All right, Hebrews 12, 16 actually talks about this and, and uses Esau as an example for us today. He, it says this in the Bible of Hebrews 12, 16, make sure that no one is immoral or is godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. See, when we live and love God, we receive that right to live in eternity with God after we die. And this is priceless. That blessing is priceless. So don't be like Esau and put a price on it, all right? Instead, live fully in that blessing that God has for you. God's blessing is priceless because Jesus has already paid the price. And that third and final reason why God's blessing matters is because God's blessing is worth fighting for. We see this once again with Jacob. He was willing to do whatever he had to, trick, barter, uh, you know, trade in, whatever, because he wanted to receive a blessing from his father. And thankfully, you and I, we don't have to do that today to receive God's blessing. We simply just need to believe like Abraham did. But it's up to us to hold on to that great gift that God has given us. It, it doesn't come naturally. We, we must choose each day to follow God and his ways. We must choose to fight against the sin in our own life so that we don't trade in that blessing that God's kids have for some temporary satisfaction. So my question is, are you fighting to keep God's blessing on your life? And as we close this moment, I had one last question. You see, through this whole series, we've been learning together how to be part of a family. All right, but most importantly, we're learning how to be part of God's family. And as you've already seen, the Bible teaches us that to be part of God's family, we need to decide to believe in Jesus. We need to accept his forgiveness and follow him and say this out loud. So if you watch and if you're there and you want to become a child of God and be a part of that blessing from God to live with him on earth now and in heaven after, then, then pray this prayer with me. If you're ready to make that decision, call out to God and believe in Jesus then pray this prayer and let's, let's step into that blessing uh, of God and let's step into that, that role as kids and children of God. So let's pray this together. Right there watching, just pray this out loud. Uh, pray this in your mind. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've gone my own way. I've messed up. But I believe that you sent Jesus, your very self, your son, to die for me and pay the price for my sins. And I also believe that he came back to life making a way for me to live with you now on earth and in heaven after. So Holy Spirit, come into my life. Fill me and help me live and love God from this moment on. Amen. Amen. Wow, wow. Well, for all those who prayed that prayer with me, congratulations and welcome to the family. Keep holding on to that blessing and fighting for that blessing. And also be sure to tell a parent. Now, next steps, you made that decision. I encourage you, tell a parent, tell a caregiver, a leader, someone in your life so that they can celebrate with you. And also have them help you get a gift from us. We got a gift that we want to give you something to go through together with that parent or caregiver or leader in your life, something you can read together. So just simply click on the link in the, the video description right there, you'll, and you'll be able to get it. Or you can also have that parent or guardian uh, help you text, uh, uh, text alive to 9400. So we are so excited for you to be part of God's family and his blessing. But for the others of you watching, all right, for others of you that have received God's blessing, but maybe you're forgetting how much it's worth. All right, maybe you're thinking about trading it in just so you can be like everyone else or, or because living for God is tough at times and it doesn't make sense sometimes. Well, I've been there. I get it. Can I pray for you? 
Can I pray that we learn from Jacob and Esau today and we don't trade in that blessing God has already given you because it, it would be easier or a temporary satisfaction. Well, let me pray right now together uh, with you guys as well. So God, I pray for those watching who, who have received God's blessing. They have accepted Jesus' forgiveness of the life and, 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 and stepped into that line of blessing that you gave Abraham. God, I pray for those who are starting to forget how much that's worth. God, it's priceless. We didn't have to do anything except believe because of the price Jesus paid. So remind us, Lord. Remind us of the immense price that Jesus paid for us to be blessed, for us to be a child of God. And Holy Spirit, in those moments where we got to make a decision, do I be like everyone else? Do I be like the world? Do I want to trade in that blessing for a temporary feel-good moment? I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd remind us of this story. Remind us that God's blessing is worth fighting for. And it's worth the tough, the tough choices sometimes to follow God instead of our own ways and other people's ways. So remind us of that. Help us fight for God's blessing and hold on to that in our own life. And we pray this all together. Amen and amen. Well, God's blessing matters. And don't forget it, boys and girls. And speaking of forgetting, I, I better not forget our final Family Matters game is coming up. All right, so get your points tallied. Get them ready. And let's go play. Here we go. Welcome one and all. We are here at game three of Family Matters. This game is called Lightning Feud. And here's how we're going to play. At this point, add up the points for each of your teams. So add up how many points your team has. All right, now the team with the most points will play Lightning Feud. If there's a tie, feel free to battle it out with a game of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And whoever wins Rock, Paper, Scissors will get a play Lightning Feud. All right, so add up your points. If there's a tie, then Rock, Paper, Scissors. All right. You guys figure out who went, who's the winning team? Who's got the most points? All right, the team with the most points will play this, this lightning feud game. Here is how we're going to play. The winning team, choose a contestant from your team to compete. And make sure to get something to write down or record their answers on. Once again, a piece of paper, phone, anything like that will do. Now, this one contestant will have 60 seconds to answer the questions from today's Bible story. If the contestant gets all the answers correct, they get to choose a game or activity to play as a group or family today. That's right, because you're the winning team and you are trying to get all the marbles in Lightning Feud. If you get all the answers correct here in Lightning Feud, you team, you get to decide the game or activity that your group or family does that day. So you ready? You got your contestant ready? Just one person, one person from the winning team going to try to see if they can get all the answers from today's Bible story. All right, got five more seconds. Get all the wiggles, giggles out. Get all the shakes uh, and uh, nervousness. Okay, three, two, one. All right, step right up, contestant. Here are your questions. And you can write these down, contestant, or you can have someone else write these, these answers down, whatever you want to do. But somewhere, record those answers so the other team can check them afterwards. Here we go. Here's your questions. What are the names of Isaac and Rebecca's twin sons? Who was the oldest of Isaac and Rebecca's twin sons? What was Esau good at? Esau came in from the open country hungry. What food was Jacob making? What did Esau trade for a bowl of soup? There's your five questions. Feel free to go back. Write down any more answers, change your answers. And you can have this time about 25 more seconds. Get all the answers down. Don't leave anything blank. 15 seconds left. What do you think? Got the answers, you feeling good about it? 10 seconds. Coming up on five, four, three, two, one. And stop recording, stop writing your answers down. At this point, what you have is what we're going to go with. All right, so give your answers to the other team, someone from the other team. Let's go ahead and cross-check and make sure they are right or wrong. Okay, take that time, switch those answers. Very good. Now let's check them. Once again, if they get all five, all five of these answers right, 
team. You get to choose a game or activity to do as a group or a family today. Here we go. Answer number one. What are the names of Isaac and Rebecca's twin sons? Jacob and Esau. Very good. If they wrote down something along the lines, pretty well, close on, spot on to Jacob and Esau. Give them credit. All right, now, answer number two. Who was the oldest of Isaac and Rebecca's twin sons? Esau is correct. All right, Esau. That is the only answer they could have. All right, Jacob or Esau is the answer. If they got Esau, give them credit. Here we go. Answer to number three. What was Esau good at? Hunting. That's right. Hunting. If they got hunting or something on the lines of hunting, then give them credit. They're well on their way to getting all five. Just two more left. All right. Answer number four. Esau came in from the open country hungry. What food was Jacob making? Soup or stew. That is right. Soup or stew. That is the answer they need to get credit. All right, one last one. How you doing? You got all of them? Got a few? Ah, uh, but you got to have all of them. So if you are if you got all four at this point, you got a fighting chance at picking the game or activity today. All right, answer to number five. What did Esau trade in for a bowl of soup? His blessing or a birthright. Yes, his blessing or his birthright. If you wrote that down, add them up. Did you get all of them? All five? Well, congratulations if you did. You get to choose the game or activity. And thank you to both teams. Thank you to all of you for playing and participating in today's Family Matters. I had a blast, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Oh, yeah. Well, congratulations, team, for winning. Don't worry. We will get you. You to be able to do your prize, your activity, whatever, in a little bit. We are about to wrap up. But before we wrap up this service, let's go ahead and do one final thing. Get into little huddles. Get into little groups uh, right there with your with your, your family, your friends, your whatever, whoever, your group that you're with. Get into small little huddles. And you're going to see some questions on the screen. And let's end our service today by just saying out loud the things that God has taught us. So check this out. Here's the questions on the screen. Ask each other these, and let's talk about all that God has done and taught us today. Here we go. Well, this next little bit is actually for you parents, caregivers, leaders in these kids' lives. This is an idea, a little activity to connect the lesson from today about God's blessing matters into your own life, into your own week. All right, so I hope you take this idea and run with it this week to help continue the learning about God's blessing matters. Here, here's, the, here's the idea. Remember the importance of God's blessing on your life by taking a selfie and then write a verse of God's blessing over it. All right, if you don't know a verse to write, try reading through Deut Deuteronomy 28 or asking another family member for a verse that reminds them of God's blessing for them too. All right, well, what a great idea. I hope you guys do take a selfie and write, God, write down a blessing from God on that picture and put it on your mirror, your fridge, wherever you can remember it. Well, I had a blast today. That does it for today. That is a wrap. You guys, uh, air high fives all around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys did an amazing job and continue to remember how God's blessing matters. Well, parents, caregivers, leaders, if you want more worship services to do together and experience God there right where you're at, be sure to check out cfachurch.com. And then for more fun things and more stuff throughout the whole week, just follow us on social media so you stay connected. 
And last but not least, what a service we've had together. It's been full of twists and turns and learning together how God's blessing matters. Well, thank you to all of you for participating. Congrats to our winning team again today. Now take what you've learned about God's blessing on your life to help you with your own family matters because you are a child of God. And don't give that blessing up so easily by what you say or do or think. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next week. Adios.